Thank you very much. Um, and thank you, Carl, for the invitation to uh, come and speak to you and give a, a brief introduction to uh, the Law Library of Congress, and I promise I'll be very brief. Um, the Law Library of Congress was created in 1832 to serve Congress, uh, and it was created by law to serve Congress and the Supreme Court. Today, the Law Library is the de facto national law library and serves, uh, in addition to Congress, the federal judiciary, federal government agencies, and the general public. It is the largest law library with over 2.6 million volumes in its collection. The law library, as part of the Library of Congress, strives to provide, uh, as the current law librarian of Congress, Roberta Schaefer, likes to say, the four A's, access to authoritative, accurate, and authenticated legal information from all jurisdictions, local, national, and international. In addition to making its resources available, a law library mission is to sustain and preserve a universal collection of law for the future. Being the world's largest law library, the Law Library of Congress has a significant and fairly comprehensive paper collection of primary legal materials and information, not just from the United States, but from numerous foreign jurisdictions as well. The Law Library also provides access to a growing amount of these primary materials in electronic and digital format, and it would like to uh, provide greater access to uh, materials that are not currently in, uh, currently in its collection, but not currently in digital format. Since 1995, the library has provided access to U.S. federal legislative information through the Thomas.gov site. As many of you know, Thomas provides access to federal legal and legislative information such as bills, resolutions, the congressional record, schedules and calendars, and other committee information. The law library is the content manager for Thomas.gov and continues to improve the site. So for example, uh, recently the law library uh, added a new feature such as expanding a sharing feature that allows users to save or share a permanent link via bookmarks, email, or even social networking sites. Now, since 1991, the Law Library also has, a hand, has had a hand in the design, development, and maintenance of GLIN, which is the Global Legal Information Network, a public database of the official text of statutes, regulations, judicial decisions, and other related legal material that originate from countries in the Americas, Europe, Africa, and Asia. While there are some limitations to accessing that information um, in the Glenn database, the site provides full text access to primary legal materials for most participating jurisdictions published in their original sources and in their original languages. So uh, the law library itself is guided by the belief that universal access to and the understanding of law serves as an important role in the society. And these are just some of the examples of what the law library is doing currently in trying to create a world digital law library that would allow researchers throughout the world to search for and use local, state, national, and international primary sources and public domain legal and legislative information. Is that brief enough? <laughs> Thank you.